Hey guys, welcome to our home safari here at the zoo. My name's Cody, and it happens to be a very special day. Do you guys know what day that is? It's World Penguin Day. You're right, absolutely. So, World Penguin Day today, so we're going to do some really cool stuff. You guys just met Ruggles. That is one of our brand new rock hoppers here at the zoo. Uh, now we're going to bring out pretty much everybody we have. Uh, let's, uh, let's start off with the mini penguin crate. You guys cool with that? I'm cool with that. Excuse my mask, too. So, here we go. Come on, guys. Hey, let's go. A little pause for dramatic effect, right? Come on. around the birdhouse just a little bit before we saw some other stuff so these are our king penguins that you met the last time so you might have noticed out there in social media land a lot of zoos are walking penguins around the zoo and while we think that's really cool we've been doing that for years so that's why we haven't really been doing that but we're going to give them a chance to kind of explore the migration room today so we have other species in here too so we have ruggles again that you met we have our magellanic penguins over here we have our senior keeper, Dan, with us as well. So we've got a lot of cool stuff going on in here. Again, since it's World Penguin Day, let's do something pretty crazy, right? So we're going to give the kings a chance to kind of walk around and explore a bit. So again, king penguins are the second largest penguin species on the planet, just behind the emperors. And then again, we have rockhopper and Magellanic penguins here with us. So again, World Penguin Day, pretty exciting day. Honestly, for all of us here at the Cincinnati Zoo, World Penguin Day is pretty much every day. But uh, yeah, for today, it's a pretty cool holiday. Hoping these guys will vocalize because we're right on the cusp of breeding season. I've been seeing a lot of bird um, pre-breeding season activity, a lot of nest building. These guys with the kings, they're definitely doing a lot of pairing, specifically Larry and Coretta. Those two have been hanging out a lot, so we're hoping for some uh, king babies this year. That would be really cool. It's been a few years, but... Still a really, really cool bird. Again, king penguins, very close cousin to the emperor penguin, a little bit smaller in size. Uh, I think they're more elegant looking. I think they're more regal. Hence the name king penguin. <laughs> That's right. That's right, BB. Cool. If you guys have any questions, be sure to shout them out to us, and we can get those for you. Do penguins mate for life? Do penguins mate for life? That's one of my favorite questions. Penguins are monogamous, but that does not mean for life. That means per season. So they will stay with that mate during that breeding season, and then once that season's over, or they go their separate ways. The next season, they can pair up again, but statistically, it's very low. So if you guys watched the movie March of the Penguins, they told you a bunch of lies. Really cool footage, though, but a lot of inaccurate information. Really good, though. Rachel asked, how long do they stay with their mom and dad? How long do they stay with their mom and dad? So it depends on the species. So since we're talking about kings right now, king penguins are kind of the anomaly of the penguin world, kings and emperors. So most penguin species will take care of their babies for about two to three months. Once they get their subadult plumage and they're in the water, they're pretty much on their own. King penguins are kind of the weirdos though. They take care of their chick up to 18 months, which is really weird to think. Uh, I guess it's the equivalent of today's day and age. You know, we're caring for our kids up to 30 years old, you know, something around that, that range. But yeah, two to three months for quite a few species like the Magellanic here, they're, they're a little bit quicker, same with rock hoppers, but kings are gonna be a little bit different. Great question. Melissa wants to know, how do you tell them apart? How do we tell them apart? And that is basically by their bracelets. If you look, everybody has a nice little bracelet on their flippers. So we have green, we have black, we have blue, and we have hot pink. So blue is Larry, pink is Coretta, then we have BB with green and Stacy is black. All of our kings though are named after famous kings in history. So Larry King, BB King, Coretta Scott King, Stacy King for all you uh, 1990s Bulls fans. If you guys are watching The Last Dance, really, really cool documentary. But the precursor to The Last Dance Bulls, Stacy King was kind of in Dennis Rodman's role during that era. So we're kind of big geeks here when it comes to uh, naming, naming birds. Maeve wants to know how tall are they? So they're about three feet tall. 
And again, to give you a size reference, emperor penguins are about three and a half feet tall. So a little bit shorter. Uh, they go up to about 40 pounds, which an emperor, again, just to compare, emperor penguins go about 90 pounds. Trent wants to know, how old are they and how long do they usually live? So cool thing about penguins, penguins in a zoo can double their natural life expectancy. That's, a, that's pretty common across the board. So kings in their natural habitat live to be about 20. Here at the zoo, they can double that natural life expectancy and get up to about 40 years old. The oldest penguin I've ever worked with was estimated to be 49 years old, uh, which is pretty crazy to think about, a 49 year old king penguin. But yeah, they can live up, up to that age. Uh, again, doubling that natural life expectancy is pretty common. Uh, with our group today, we have everything with, with the kings at six up to about 27. Uh, Ruggles, the rock hopper, she's, I want to say, six years old. Then we have Buddy, the Magellanic Penguin, who's walking over to me right now. He is 34. I think we lost a couple. Of <laughs> they must be done with that, with World Penguin Day activities, right? All right, so what we can do is how about we take Buddy with us. We're going to leave these guys with Dan. He's going to hang out with them and maybe explore the Australasia exhibit, maybe the South American aviary, because they might want to check that out. we got a lot of cool stuff going on in there, too. Uh, but we're going to take Buddy, and let's go downstairs and see some other cool stuff. What do you guys say? Cool. I'll we'll put my mask on. Not for Buddy's safety, but for our safety. All right. See you, big guy. Looks like everybody wants to come party, that's fine. <laughs> so we're going to take our elevator downstairs. You guys probably have never been on an elevator with a penguin, but that's what we're going to do today. <laughs> All right. So again, this is Buddy. He's one of our elder statesmen of the penguin exhibit. Again, he's about 34 years old. He's the second oldest penguin that we do have in our group. Our oldest penguin is Berger. He is actually up in the exhibit right now. He is 37. So that's pretty crazy to think about, a 37-year-old king penguin. But it's pretty awesome. It just shows you how, how amazing the uh, life, the care for these guys. I mean, they have a pretty sweet life. They have health care better than mine. They have restaurant-quality fish twice a day. Uh, they, uh, they do pretty well. All right, so we're now in our downstairs area of the birdhouse. You guys are giving like a birdhouse tour today, too. It's pretty cool. We're gonna put Buddy here. He's gonna come hang out. So this is our kitchen area, and these are little penguins, also known as fairy penguins or blue penguins. These are six of our chicks that hatched out this year. So these guys are all babies. They're all just a couple months old, which uh, gave you a nice little swim lesson here in our birdhouse kitchen. So right now we are building a brand new exhibit for Rue Valley. So yeah, there's gonna be kangaroos there, but nobody's really focusing on that because nobody likes kangaroos, at least in the birdhouse anyways. Uh, but these guys are gonna have a fantastic new exhibit. It's gonna be pretty much the same size, roughly, as Fiona's exhibit, to give you guys a reference. It's about 30,000 gallons of water. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna have an RFID tracking system, so everybody with their little bracelet, they're gonna have an RFID tag. It's gonna let us know when they're swimming, where they're swimming, where they're getting out of the pool. It's gonna be fantastic. As a big thanks to my co-worker and co-head keeper, Ricky, and also our animal behavior consultant, Dr. Katie Califit. So really, really cool stuff going on. We've been calling it the Penguin Fitbit. So if anybody from Fitbit's watching that and you want to sponsor something, that'd be really cool. Because um, I mean, how often can you say like, you have a Penguin Fitbit? That's, that's pretty interesting. Robin wants to know if they eat things other than fish. So they do. Uh, the fish is primarily their diet. I mean, for most penguin species, uh, you can get into some other stuff like these guys. The, the little penguins they can eat krill. Uh, you've got squid for king penguins. That's uh, one thing that they do during certain times of the year. So it's a, a variety, but it's pretty much mainly fish that you're finding in the ocean is what they're going to be eating. Samantha asked, how many eggs do they lay at a time? So that depends on the species, but most species lay two eggs per clutch. So that one clutch per season. Uh, king penguins and emperor penguins are a little bit different. They just do the one egg per clutch. But pretty much everybody else does two. A deadly penguins, which we don't have here at the zoo, but I've worked with them before. Sometimes they'll lay three per clutch, but for the most part, you're looking at one or two. And these are the smallest types These of are the smallest, yeah. These guys are all full grown. They're really, really small. So you guys, we just saw the king penguins up to three feet tall and 40 pounds. These guys are 16 inches tall and about two pounds. 
So, the smallest penguin species on the planet. Um, really, really interesting bird from Australia and New Zealand. Um, really, really tiny. Um, doing somewhat okay in their natural habitat. Um, really, really liking that warmer climate, hence why they're not up in the polar exhibit upstairs where we just were. Um, really, really cool bird though. We're really lucky to have them too. We have the largest colony in North America and uh, we've been breeding them with uh, unheard of efficiency. These guys, they're, they're doing really well here at the Cincinnati Zoo, so it's perfect timing for us building that new exhibit down in the Valley. Katie asked, how long can they stay in the water? Most penguins, they're going to be about 30 seconds to 2 minutes. The longest recorded dive ever by a penguin was 21 minutes. That was an emperor penguin. It, compare that to human records. What is human record? Like 9 or 12 minutes, something like that, I think. So, yeah, 21 minutes. That's, that's extreme, but most penguins, that 30 seconds to 2 minutes. Rowan wants to know, can they swim as soon as they're born? They cannot. So, when these guys hatch, they hatch out underneath their parents, they hatch out of the egg, and they're really, really fluffy. They don't have this water-resistant feather that you're seeing with these little penguins. They don't have any of that. They just have this downy, fluffy, warm, insulating feather. And what that feather does is just keeps them really, really warm when they're sitting underneath their parents. It's kind of like an extra insulator there. Um, once they get a certain age, these guys, for little penguins, you're talking about a month and a half to two months old, those new feathers growing under the down feather pushes the down feather out. That gives them this more water durable feather. I'm not going to say waterproof because they're not waterproof. Um, they're just, it's a more water resistant feather the way it lays, lays out compared to the down feather. But uh, yeah, these guys, um, really uh, awesome feather structure. And uh, then they can swim in about that two months time span, two, two and a half months. Megan has a good question. She asks, why are penguins black and white? Why are penguins black and white? That's one of my favorite questions. Um, with penguins, think about where they live. They live in the ocean, so they're spending about 75% of their life time swimming in the ocean. When you live in the ocean, when you live anywhere, you need to be camouflaged when you live out in their natural habitat. So, we think about camouflage. Think, think about these guys. Dark on their back, light on their belly. This is called countershading camouflage. So if you swim above the penguin and you look down, the sea floor is nice and dark. Their black back blends in, uh, so you can't see them when you're swimming above them. You swim underneath. Light coming through the water is very bright, they have white bellies, that blends in as well. So, very, very efficient camouflage. It's so efficient that the United States Navy uses it. Super, super efficient. Shannon asked, how many different species of penguins are there? There are 17 species of penguins found worldwide. You talk to different biologists and scientists and zookeepers, they'll tell you anywhere from probably 16 to 20 different species. A lot of times people break up subspecies and such, but we go with 17 here. Uh, seems to make sense with us. Um, here at the zoo, we have five species. The only species we did not hang out with today is the African penguin. Uh, a little bit of logistical challenge right now because their exhibit is completely getting renovated as well. So we have two brand new penguin exhibits. Buddy's, buddy's concurring over there. Um, <laughs> So, Magellanic penguins very, very similar and very closely related to the African penguins. So we decided not to bring the African penguins up. So maybe we'll do another home safari in the future with our African penguins. Eli asked, how do the moms feed the babies? Really, really interesting, and I would bet your mom did not feed you this way, Eli. Uh, basically what the parents will do is they go out to sea and catch a bunch of fish. They bring it back into their system and they kind of uh, partially digest that, and then they throw up in their baby's face. Uh, it's a really exciting way. I tried to feed my kids that way, and my wife was not having it. So, uh, yeah, I would, I would bet your mom didn't feed you that way either. Uh, yeah, you just basically, the parent throws up in their face, they get this, like, this fish smoothie, and then once they get older, the parents start bringing, actually, full fish back, and they start going that way, and then they go out and hunt for themselves. Great question. Christina wants to know, what is your favorite part about working with penguins? Oh, one of my favorite parts. Oh, my gosh. Uh, there's a lot. Um, I, one of my favorite personal geek moments is, actually, I've worked with 10 out of 17 species of penguins found worldwide. So I, I've been lucky enough to work with 10 species. That's, that's pretty awesome. Um, one of my favorite things, though, is that like, if I'm having a really bad day in the penguin exhibit, and I like, you know, just having one of those days, we all have them, right? And I look out the, the exhibit windows, and I see everybody like looking in, and everybody gets really excited, and that kind of brings me back to like, hey, wait a minute, I do like a really cool job. And then the other part of that is 
getting people excited about penguins. That is one of my favorite things, too, is because you can't see penguins in the Ohio River. You can't see them in your local lake. So how do I get people excited about them? You have a penguin out in front of you. You have a penguin on a home safari. You can actually like get excited about these guys and help them out in their natural habitat. So I think that's one of the really cool things about my job is just getting people excited about nature and getting them, uh, hopefully, wanting to make a difference out in their natural habitat. All right, so... Again, thanks for joining us for our home safari today. Uh, again, happy World Penguin Day. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Uh, be sure to check out on our website the two activities. Yeah, so World Penguin Day gets two activities. I mean, how crazy is that? I think that's fantastic. So do those. Share them with us on our social media and on our website. And be sure to tune in tomorrow for another bird-focused uh, bird focused home safari. You're going to be hanging out with Ricky, doing some stuff with Audubon. It's going to be really cool. So... Definitely check that out. You guys be safe out there and take care of each other.